Uesagi Kenshin, one of Japan's most powerful feudal lords, said, Go to the battlefield firmly confident of victory, and you will return home with no wounds. Wish to survive the battle, and you will surely meet death. Factories in Japan produced a never-ending stream of cars for the masses in the 80s and 90s. But among those common cars reigned the Daimyo, the Lords. RX-7, NSX, Skyline, Supra. Lords that had no fear of enemies from distant countries, no fear of standards or rules that restricted their abilities. They rode into battle with full confidence of victory, and decades later, their names still echo off the concrete walls of cities across the world, and fear-stricken challengers hesitate to look their way on the empty motorway. They, like the feudal lords of half a millennia prior, use their prowess in battle and their sharp intellect to cement the dominance of their marks as world leaders. But just as quickly as their rise to power came, these lords of the Japanese car industry disappeared into obscurity. Like the daimyo before them, the world moved quicker than they could imagine, and their fire-breathing hearts soon became obsolete in a world that left behind performance and, perhaps more importantly, passion. But years later, in 2007, one of those marks did something that nobody expected. Nissan revived one of the legends. And while the Skyline name had been given as a hand-me-down to the V35, the defining moniker of the Nissan brand, GTR, was displayed proudly across the sheet metal of this new creation. What you hear is the roar of Nissan's passion for performance. What you see is its ultimate physical expression, the all-new Nissan GTR. So then, had the landscape finally come full circle? Were the Japanese finally back to assert their dominance in the way that mattered beyond nitrogen emissions and fuel consumption? Well, not exactly. Success in the 2000s found a few of the Japanese manufacturers in comfortable places, with record sales and numerous awards for safety and economy. Nissan, or Renault Nissan as they were, was one of these manufacturers. Désormais scellé entre les constructeurs français et japonais, Renault et Nissan. Renault qui s'implante donc en Asie après la signature d'un accord ce matin à Tokyo. Nissan's French overlords used this success to develop the GTR in typical halo car fashion, for both publicity and to develop bleeding edge technology that would make its way down the Nissan lineup. The difference this time was nobody really followed suit. Honda briefly showed a hand when it revealed the HSV-010 race car, but it went mostly unnoticed as Honda refused any notion of a streetcar coming from it. Mazda was barely making ends meet as its Ford-led shakeup was still settling down. Mitsubishi, well, let's just say they were digging a hole for themselves that was far deeper than anyone could imagine. Toyota, on the other hand, developed the LFA, which was an absolute engineering marvel. A halo car among halo cars, the LFA was the burning catalyst that led to some of Toyota's biggest advancements in technology. But it wasn't what the people wanted, nor was it designed to be. It was a project by Toyota for Toyota. It wasn't until 2012 that Honda finally showed us an NSX concept along with a proud exclamation that, yes, this time is for real. And it wasn't long after that that the whispers began hitting the interwebs. First the GTR, now the NSX. Is, is a Supra in the works? There were a few hints that it would happen. A brief interview mention here, a trademark refiling there, and of course, the occasional interesting motor show concept. But Toyota remained relatively tight-lipped about any notion of a new Supra. And with the launch of Toyota's new 8.6, the Supra was hardly on anyone's radar. 
Then on January 13th, 2014, Toyota unveiled the FT1, an absolutely stunning concept with a front engine, rear drive layout. Designed by Calti in California, the FT1 drew inspiration from so many of the Toyota greats. The 2000 GT, the MR2, and yes, the Supra. And on top of all this, Toyota boldly proclaimed that the FT1 was approved for production at a target price of around $60,000. It wasn't long after that that news of Toyota and BMW working on a secret project made headlines and the car world began putting two and two together. Toyota was making a new sports car with BMW and it was going to be called the Supra. While all this was going on, Mazda showed off the RX Vision concept, a stunning car that certainly grabbed the world's attention. But Mazda, to this day, still refuses to give any confirmation of a production model. And with news of the rotary coming back only as a hybrid range extender, the idea of a successor to the RX-7 seems more and more distant. Fast forward to now. Toyota just revealed the Gazoo Racing Supra concept. A long-awaited confirmation that the FT1, along with all the prototypes spied testing around the world, were indeed a precursor to the fifth generation Supra. With no real specs or figures, the internet is abuzz with speculation of what lies underneath the sheet metal of this concept. Whatever it may be, Toyota's confirmation of the new Supra is a huge step in the right direction for the brand, and will hopefully serve as fuel for the rekindling of that Japanese sports car passion. Japan's sports cars have always been different. They are, in many ways, a reflection of Japan's unique culture and ideology. The resurgence of names like GTR, NSX, RX and now Supra reignite that unmistakably Japanese passion that so many of us had lost touch with in decades prior. Whether or not this is a resurgence of that Japanese dominance that defined the 80s and 90s still remains to be seen. And much like the early days of that period, there will be missteps. The current GTR is getting old. The NSX was received with a cold response that took Honda by surprise. And many people are still fearful that BMW's influence in the Supra will result in something undeserving of its namesake. But if the spirit is truly there, then the teams behind these cars will continue to battle, confident in victory, fully accepting of the possibility of death. Then, and only then, can these Japanese sports cars once again become lords.